Good morning. It's a chilly morning, and when you take a night's sleep with the presentation from a good old friend of mine, where he talked about so many animals, predators, sharks, hawks, and so many others, I got a weird dream. Dream was not that weird, but sleep was so good in winter. So you get that kind of dreams which awakens your soul also. So dream was very simple. I got to see a, a monkey and a crocodile. And uh, as I was just making my presentations, I just uh, idea struck to me. Let me think about it. And that it's not me, it's my dream. He's talking about that only. And my, when I woke up in the morning, I had to get up a little early. And that's changed whole concept, uh, concept about monopoly and whole concept of what is a public interest and how it can be saved. Now you make a pond pool. You have a crocodile sitting over there. And that's a monopoly. He is having a monopoly in the pond. He will not allow anybody to enter that pond. He will kill everybody. And you have a monkey sitting on the ground, and he's enjoying everything what is on the ground. He has a complete source of resources with him, money, or which we call now money. He's having sweet fruits. Somehow, these two people now became friends with old story. And this monkey is now every day coming to a crocodile, and uh, he's providing him some good, good fruits. That's money. And uh, Somehow they became friends, and crocodile also is happy. And then they one day he offered him, you just come and travel in my pool. I'll take you to the other world, which is very good. Inventors, you know, inventors take you to a different world, different level, different level. So he took him around the pond. And uh, because he took him around, so he said, okay, I, every day I will take you around. Then he offered him the sweets, sweet money. And suddenly, Every day, and one day he went home, and you know home, who are supreme, wife, crocodile wife. So he went home and told that, see, I have a very good monkey friend, and he offered me these sweets, and wife liked it. Three, four days she liked it very much. After fourth day, she shed some crocodile tears. You know, what are the crocodile tears of your wife? It can change any, any pauper to a billionaire. So, things are very simple. This gentleman went with an idea back to the person. I'll, I'll entice him, bring him back to the pond. And wife said, if we can eat this, his brain will be more good than what he is offering to you. Eat him, everything. Just suck him to the core. Story is simple. But this gentleman is not that fool. Public is not fool. Very simple. We have people who can save us. That is CCI. He will save us from the monopoly. Anybody who is trying to feed, trying to pull us back and bring it back to core, they will be definitely is a safeguard for us. Now I'll just begin from where I left. And uh, very simple things are there, but I've just don't make your life complicated. As a statutory warning I'm giving you, you don't read statutory warnings. None of us can read it because they're too small for reading it. But this statutory warning, I'm just making you to read. Just to say that what I'm saying here is some general principle trends relating to IPRs and competition law. I only hope to assist those who need to predict whether you should challenge a practice as an anti-competitive how. My broad observation cannot remove judgments and discretions in antitrust law enforcement. Moreover, the standards set forth in my presentations are not guidelines, and it must be applied in unforeseeable circumstances with caution and under proper guidance of the experts who are sitting around. So when I'm talking to experts, I don't have to say much about it, but again, the crocodiles come back to me. And this is the first crocodile which appeared in late 1800s. So you have standard oils, steel, railroads, copper, and all these big companies. They sat on it, and they controlled the prices, 
and restrict the competition. But things are not simple. When you have too many crocodiles around, you fight with each other. So that leads to furious swing wars. Swing machine wars, everybody knows. And they were fighting with each other for infringement and all those things. And this represents how your competitor can also fight with you. But this fighting will worsen thanks to IP liars. I'm not saying that all IP liars are like that. But IP liars are smart enough to do what? These people were fighting for something which every household requires. Swing machine was required by everyone. And these silly guys are swing each other. And who were benefited? Guess. Any guesses? No guesses. So, only people who make money were real IP liars. But they were the people who were making money. I don't say all liars are like that. I have my good friend sitting over there. That's Monium. So many others there. They also do some out of the box things. And this one is the liar which did something really wonderful. And he's Arnoldo Porter, smart IP liar, he considered a simple but deadly idea and got all the parties to the one pool and asked them to pool their resources as a patent pools. And this is a deadly combination. At the time, he was not knowing that what he is creating is a Frankenstein. He simply wanted them to finish their fights and let us enjoy that. But he, he combined them to control rather than fight and destroy each other. And this is how the patent pools, what you call as. Now cartels were born with unlimited power. Once you have unlimited power with you. So deal was struck with all of them and they were, everybody, every person who was making a swing machine was to pay the $15 at a time, huge money for them. And one gentleman was holding the dubious patents, which we call SEPs. So he's the person on whose thing, everything is built around him. Though this monopoly was unfair, but it stood for so many years, unchallenged. Press was clamoring, but courts were saying, this is what we can do, nothing. And all these partners became rich. But what we are now looking at, can this patent pooling uncock the technology transfer, bottleneck, and create value. Let us look at it, how it has created value. Yes, when mandated by government policy, aircrafts, they were holding monopoly over aircraft, but government just made an aircraft association so that they can use them for better of the public. But glass manufacturers, they were creating problems, so it is not good. If when you are making a cartel to increase the price, not good for them. But again, when you are making standards, just now my friend has said about standards. So this is good, so that you can bring so many things together and you don't have to run around. Swing machine was one of the standards. Perhaps that's the reason why the court did not allow them to be taken as cartels, movie projectors, radios, MPEGs, now 3Gs, 4Gs, all these are the standards only. And but last, lastly, this mechanism should not be used to avoid costly litigations and it which affects competition. So these are the few possible things which we should look at it when we are talking about competition, when you are talking about the power you have with IP. And this IP should not be used for creating something which is, which is not good for general public. Pertinent pools are beneficial, eliminating problems, reducing licensing transaction costs, because when you join, one stop, one time effort, your distribution of the risk is involved, gaining equitable income, exchange of technical information at one place. Otherwise, you don't talk to each other. And they were criticized because, Sim, as you said, I have said earlier that it costs information are there, shielding of the invalid patent is also there, and it eliminates competition. But if you join together, you eliminate others. You don't allow others to them. Now the real debate. IP has its own area. It's creating a monopoly. Nobody says, but patent law never says that we are creating monopolies. Particularly, Patent Act is not talking about. It says we are giving you a right 
which you can use it amongst other people if you are not infringing that. And competition law is creating a market check that you are, you are, you are in a dominant position which should not be misused. If it is misused, the dominant position has to be checked. So misuse for purpose what? You want to use the public money for your gain. That's not good. When you are, you are selling something to someone, you, you have exploited him to that extent that costs are not raised, that pinches. And people say that IP laws are exempted from competition law. It is, yes, it is exempted because law says like that. My friend has just said that. I also say the same thing. But if IP laws are misused, if dominance power is misused, there should be a, someone to check that. Though, when I come to next present, next slides, you will know that IP in Patent Act, how it is inbuilt, checks are there. So, competition law has sticker norms because it is not only dealing with intellectual property, it is dealing with so many other things, so many other things. And norms are very strict. IP laws are simple because you, they protect the individual, it's a commercial interest. But this commercial interest operates in a market which, which, is, which is also important. You cannot control the market. So for checking that, we have to look at it. What are the issues which are now being debated? IP rights are not creating market dominance. Some may say, yes, it is creating because if I have a drug with me, I can sell it whatever cost uh, I, I am interested in. But this is not the purpose of intellectual property law. It says that you create a monopoly is given to you. It operates in other, under the purview of other law also. If some of the drugs are not banned by India, they have to be banned. So similarly, competition law also does not say that dominant power is not necessary. Yes, it says it is necessary, but it should not be abusive. You should not be like the crocodile I talked about. So you can get some money from me, no problem. But you, 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 if you want to eat me up, definitely. There's an there's a issue which competition law will come into play. And you have to build up some, some safety zones. Safety zones are the zones where you can work in a safe manner. I, you are exploiting your intellectual property and also avoiding the competition law problems. But both these laws are made for what? One is for promoting innovation and progress of consumers and economic welfare. This is very general slide I'm just talking about. Uh, it's, it's talking about the interaction between competition law and IPRs. And there's nothing much to say about it. Only thing where we can say that IP laws grant monopoly rights, but which inhibit competition to a certain extent. Competition law promotes the market prohibiting anti-competitive conduct. So it's a, it's a conduct which is the which is the important. And this is how the patent. Uh, this is how the competition law has a, a, has a interaction with our own laws. This gives you a fair idea that what are the laws which are protected and. Mr. Ramajan has already told so many things about it. I'm just keeping those slides. Again, my interest is only the second slide, second dot, which talks about 84. It talks about compulsory license. If you abuse a, mon a monopoly under patent, then there's a compulsory license. And anti-competitive anti practices are specially treated in 87, 84. If you are not granting license, or if you are granting license at exorbitant cost, or not reasonable cost, it is doomed to be a, doomed to be a thing which is not meeting the public requirement. And in such cases, if, if court decides that this is anti-competitive anti practices, the time given to you for six months is also not there with you. And for export purposes also, this anti-competitive practices are involved, if court says this is anti-competitive, so you are also given the opportunity to export. So these are some safeguards which are inbuilt in the, in the Patent Act for protection of the public as well as the uh, stopping the 
Intel, uh, stopping the anti-competitive behavior of the patentee. These are very important nine no-nos for anti-competitive license practice. These are very known things. First, you cannot tie the things. You cannot assign back. You cannot say that you just, you cannot resale the goods. And, and you cannot restrict the license ability to deal with other products. You cannot say that you buy only my product. Other products, you are not supposed to do it. And you cannot stop me to, not to grant further licenses. Some mandatory packages licenses are there. A royalty not reasonably based is there. Use of product made by patented process. And so on. Because these are general things which normally everybody knows. And Patent Act has inbuilt provision there. These, these conditions of in the license are ab 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 void. So they are, if, if you tie your, the purchase of the unpatented product, licenses ability to deal with other products, prohibiting licenses to use any other process, exclusive grant back, preventing challenges to the validity of the patent. This is very important. You cannot say that I've granted you a license, you should not challenge my patent. And some coercive licenses are there. And patent I also provide, once you grant a compulsory license to him, a remuneration is paid to you, depending on what is the invention, and controller decides that. And these are inbuilt provisions which do not say that we are only in favor of the uh, public, but also we are also in favor of the patent holder. He is paid for what he has done and according to what is reasonable. Now these are the few cases which I am talking about. I just talked about one cartel, but there were several cartels in India also. They are not relating to patents. They are relating to, in general, this is how the competition works. Every time you see that air ticket is increased, cement, price of this are increased, first thing which comes to your mind, they might have collided with each other to raise the issues. And we have, we know that this is what we, we, are, we are knowing it from years that this is happening. And they jack up the prices to skim profits. And we have some cases, I'm just going through those cases, I'm giving you only the case head, I'm just hiding the content because I'm not uh, giving you anything which is legal here. It's only an indication of what it was this case and how it is used. And the formation of film cartel was there, where, where this UDF and FICI was involved, FCCI is not FICI, FCCI. And the, in that case, it was held that a joint stand on fixing the revenue ratio is, was equivalent to the cartel. And so it hit section 2C of the competition law. Now cement, you know, fine was, there was a big news about the fine. Some 67 crores were fined on 11 companies. And few more Indian cases, jurisdictional issues. Now, because people who are being hit by the by the uh, infringement suits, they simply go to CCI and ask them that this is happening. Please consider it as a anti-competitive practice because he's not granting a license. So these issues have come, and the first one which came was the Amir Khan production case, where so it was held that. There's nothing in the competition law to indicate that the competition commission is not in, invested with the jurisdiction to determine such jurisdictional facts. Second case, again, Kingfisher. So again, the CCI is to deal with the issues come before the copyright board, so he can deal with them. And court held that does not restrict the right of any person to sue in for the infringement of patent, copyright, and trademark. All the defenses which can be raised before the copyright board can also be raised before the court. Hence, the competition law does not bar the application of other laws. Erickson case, he has already dealt with SEPs. I don't have to go into details of those cases. And judicial power also he has dealt already. So he had made my life very easy. And my final observation is that competition law 
and IPO, IP rights do not appear to fundamentally in conflict. Rather, they are directed towards the same goal, consumer, welfare, and research development, and it ensure suitable reward for the inventors, and also preserve the competition, open international, mar international market, providing best quality products at the best lower prices. So there, I finished my presentation, and when so many crocodiles around, please don't monkey with them, don't play monkeys with them. Please respect the patent holder and try to find out the best solution for yourself. And you don't have to fight for them. And this fight will go on. And let's see how this debate move forward and find a smart solution what author has found.